What's up guys, welcome back to the Drone Camps channel. If you're looking for a full in-depth review of the brand new FreeSky Twin X14, you found the right video. There is a previous video to this, a first look, it's kind of general, uh, also kind of uh, more geared toward the helicopter and maybe the RC airplane and glider audience. But this video is gonna go more into the functions, the features, and I'm gonna show you a little bit how to bind some of the receivers and which receivers are options for the FreeSky X14. So today, we're gonna to feature that radio. I'm also gonna give you some information on how it compares to my all-time favorite radio right now. It's the Radio Master Boxer. This is the Max Edition. They are about the same price. Uh, they do different features. This one has singular running on 2.4 ELRS internal built into it. Uh, I know it's a lot to kind of take all at once. And this one is running dual 2.4. And in the FPV racing and freestyle community, we know that as Gemini recently with ELRS running dual frequency, uh, which is pretty neat because that receiver has uh, two antennas on it, two diversity antennas, and it's able to give you maximum penetration and reliability without fail-safe uh, as much as a singular antenna. And we explained some of that in one of our previous videos, but today it's all about FreeSky's offering with the X14, and uh, it is not running Edge DX. Uh, it has an antenna on here that's not foldable, but it does look like my original X7. So if you remember way back in the day, FreeSky used to be the go-to radio company. There was some drama around some of the changes that happened. The FPV community got pretty pissed about that, uh, as well as the implementation of Access versus ACCST. And some of the more veteran people in our community will know what I'm talking about there. All of a sudden, all of our D16 receivers weren't compatible anymore, uh, as well as D8. And all of our tiny whoops all of a sudden didn't work with Access. So they had to quickly update that firmware, which they did. They responded. And I don't know if they've saved face or not, but here we are in 2024, now with a radio that is the twin series radios that seems to be wanting to be a competitor to Gemini style radios and modules out there. Now you can also run an external module on the back here. It does have a, a micro nano module bay on the back. It's not the full size JR module bay, which I have on my boxer. This I prefer because I'm able to use Crossfire on here, uh, my full size Crossfire module. And that's what I recommend to a lot of people out there doing long range. But this one will do long range out of the box. And they say that some of these receivers should get us up to around 100 kilometers, depending on which one you put on there. I'm gonna show in this video, again, uh, a lot of the functions and features that are inside this this radio, the pros and cons of it, and uh, you know price comparison cost versus something like the Jumper uh, T20 that's out there. You can get the Gemini version of that, or you can run the Beta FPV Super G module on your existing Radio Master, uh, or even the small pocket if you wanted to. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and dive into what FreeSky has to offer as far as a dual frequency option these days. So this is the box you get. They sent me the twin X14 version and it looks like there's also a twin X14S version, maybe a little more bells and whistles. It says the RF mode on here will do access ACCST D16, which is great, and it'll do twin mode. My box also says with battery, so maybe they're giving you the option to get it with the battery or without the battery. And this is the radio itself, and isn't it nostalgic looking? It looks like my uh, kind of future version of the X7. My original X7 was super boxy, white like this, and it looks like they offer a green version of this one, and I've seen the black one, which looks pretty cool too, but they sent me the white one, and thank God it really does remind me of my original X7. Such a cool radio running originally OpenTX, and we're moving on to Edge TX, and this one doesn't have either on there. It actually has Ethos on there, and that one came out maybe two to three to four years ago now. Ethos has been around for a while. It's not touchscreen. Uh, it is jog wheel and push button activated. We're going to tell you more about the features in here as well as far as Ethos. And I think it's a nice looking full color display. 
and it's pretty easy intuitive to learn. I think it's easier than Edge TX and Open TX, to be honest. Now this radio, it stands out uh, in the pack. It is the twin series uh, on FR Sky's website. They do have several different versions, like I mentioned before, different colors, and it is running dual 2.4 frequencies, the same as what we see on ELRS Gemini uh, from Jumper RC and Radio Master. So what makes it so different? Well, it'll work with your ACCST D16 receivers and access uh, receivers if you already have some of those. This is kind of cool um, that you can implement those and it works with all of FR Sky's twin receivers. So very important, don't get that mixed up that you're gonna be able to run uh, some of the TD receivers. TD receivers are even neater because they actually do 2.4 and 900 at the same time. Um, and that gets you a whole different, uh, you'll have to get a whole different radio to be able to use those receivers. So don't think you're gonna be able to get a TD receiver and bind it up with the X14. Uh, don't get it confused there. Use the twin receivers for the T14 and the T14S. FreeSky was also nice enough to send me the kickstand, which looks like the kickstand is separate and I'm gonna to have to install that into the back of the radio. It is a little shorter than what's on my Radio Master Box or Max Edition, but that is an option for guys that want a kickstand. Now this radio has a built-in internal and external antenna here. As you can see, it has an internal antenna and it is two antennas in one. But one thing I don't like about it is that it's not foldable. It is a fixed position antenna. It's pretty robust and it seems like it'll be great for long range, but I'm wondering why this is not directly foldable uh, or able to turn into the vertical fashion. And this radio is loaded with switches. We don't have the flat position switch here like is on my Radio Master Boxer. I would like to see a flat position switch for my arm switch on SE. One other thing that I did notice from the factory is that inside the firmware on this radio, it shows that my momentary switch is on the right. However, uh, physically, my momentary switch is here and these will need to be switched because, hey, that's not what I want for my arm switch on my left-hand side. I would have to use the SF switch as my arm switch. This is the two position switch. These can be switched without soldering, but you're gonna have to open up this radio and switch them physically. It might take you about 10 minutes time to do that. There are some screws on the back. These are probably, I believe, M2 screws. Take these out pop the radio in half, and then do that change on there. Now a little closer up, the SA switch is a three position. This one is also a three position SB, and over here SC is three position, as well as SD three position. And on the side, we have some lever switches. We have a lever switch here. And on the very back, we have push button switches, our light module bay here, which you can take that trap door on and off to put in your module, as well as two extra holes here, which I believe these install into for your kickstand, two momentary buttons back here for extra modes. And on the front, I forgot to mention, we also have mode switches across the front here. You can add extra kind of features and modes here. But what's neat about this is that we also have, you know, digital trims on here, but we can add extra trims on here. Say you're an RC glider guy and you need extra trim, you can program those into these buttons and have it uh, as, as well as an extra f uh, type of uh, trim switch, which is pretty cool. And underneath this trapdoor right here, we have a Lion pack, which is a 2S 2600 milliamp battery. It should get us a little around, say, six to eight hours worth of runtime. Looking at this radio from the bottom, what I do love about it is that it does have these two little feet here, and this one will actually stand up versus some of the other ones like the T20. For whatever reason, that one will not stand up. They made it rounded on the bottom. This one can also lay down pretty flat. And on the bottom, you see that it has a trap door for the SD card, the USB-C charging port down here, and also for running your FPD simulators, as well as the F port on the far side. It also has pre-installed hall gimbals on here. They are not the CNC metal versions, but they feel pretty good. I also noticed that they're not mechanically tension adjustable from the front or the back of the radio. So you will have to open up the radio and adjust your spring tension inside the radio uh, with a driver. So that's uh, one thing that you're gonna have to do. It also has a pretty loud speaker on here. So I started up this radio in the middle of the night. Uh, I was just in the shop and working 
on it, and I thought I might actually wake people up out in, in, in the inside of the house. Uh, but it is neat that it has a, a fairly loud speaker. If you're hearing impaired, that's kind of cool. Um, and it has a full color screen with the Ethos operating system, which I'll show you now. And I have to say, I like the Ethos operating system. I, I liked it since it came out. It's pretty cool. It is full color. It has widgets that you can uh, change and move around. You can add timers, take timers off. You can put your own quad image on here. And that's, that's nothing new to us. We've seen that with Edge TX. Uh, and that's kind of cool. You can drop in your JPEGs on the SD card here. And once they get on there, you can select it long press on this and you can reset the flight parameters, telemetry and the timers. Press to the right and you can select the model here as well. So um, now I can edit model, configure the widget and configure the screens. Press return here again to get out of that and now I'm back to the main screen and what's pretty neat about Ethos as well is you have loads of system features that you can change in here. Uh, and we can change the battery icon here for kind of a four bar battery setup, or you can change it to the voltage display. I like the voltage display on mine because I like, I'm a, I'm a I'm data nerd. I want to see that uh, as well as my connection, uh, how much DB I'm pumping out to my receiver and that I'm running 2.4 on here. Again, kind of dual band 2.4, very similar to D, uh, Gemini. Here we have a test model set up. This is just for testing. You can see where your trims are here as well. They're very small on the side as well as our system buttons there. And if we go to system, we can go to display. We can do model and we can RTN, which is return. Now let's go ahead and run around. Say you want to get into the model menus, just press MDL there and it will take you to this model menu. So. We have a few screens of different things we can do here. We can model select, we can edit model, we can go to the flight modes, the mixer, outputs, timer, trims, the RF system. This is where we can go in and make changes to the internal RF, uh, which is pretty neat. Um, I have an owner, owner registration ID. It is changeable from the internal module, obviously, to the external model, just like what you see in OpenTX. And it has a little switch there you turn on and off. It also has the type of internal module that you want. Uh, right now it's set to twin mode. We can also change it. If we wanted to run on a particular model, we wanted to run, say, D16 on an older model, ACCST, we can do that. And uh, fairly new is the access protocol, which we're not gonna do that. We're gonna leave it on twin mode uh, because those are the receivers that I like to receive from FreeSky to test out. And they didn't send me any receivers, so I can't show you how to bind it, uh, but I will show you how to do that in the radio and how to get to that. We have model ID here, channel range one through 16, racing mode, you can register this model, uh, which is cool. And down at the very bottom, it says RX1 here. And this is what's neat about this radio. If you're wanting to run multiple receivers on a single model, some people that fly FPV planes want to do that. So you can have up to three different receivers here on the same model. So RX1, 2, and 3. And it also gives me options to bind, set, and reset each of those models. So if I go over here to bind, I hit the bind button it's waiting for the receiver. Once the receiver shows up in bind mode, it will take a few seconds. Uh, go ahead and space out your receiver about, I'd say three feet away from this radio for it to be able to bind. Uh, one little tip there, if you get it too close, it will go into fail safe uh, and, or you won't be able to bind it. So press return, it takes us out of that and that's how you bind an FR Sky X14 twin receiver. Uh, we can press return again and go back to the main menu there. If we want to change up the widgets, this is pretty cool. We press display here and we can have multiple main screens. If you want, you can add one, um, change up the main one, move these around and change these values. Um, you can configure those, make it a timer or you can make it a variety of different things, flight values. You can put it into trainer mode. Um, and timers, one, two, three different timers on there for different types of flight modes. If we press back again, return, uh, same thing as the back button, takes me out of that and back to the main screen. If I press on system, that will take me into the system menu of Ethos operating system, which is cool because I can access my SD card in the file manager. I can go to alerts, I can go to date and time. Mine was set to 24 hour time and I changed it to 12 hour time here. See, it's 1.42 p.m. now. Click on that and it'll take you in there. You can change it here with the on off switches. It's pretty intuitive 
and easy. And again, I think it's kind of, dare I say, easier than Edge TX. And we can go to general. We can change things like the, uh, the language for display. Uh, it'll also change the voice pack in here from English uh, to Czech, Deutsch, uh, Espanol, French, Italian, Netherlands, which is cool, uh, Portuguese. So it has a whole bunch of different um, voice protocols programmed into this, which is neat. And we can also change the display brightness. We can turn it down. We can use the wake up system to say always on. That's kind of cool if you're not too worried about a really long day out flying. Um, and I believe this will be pretty easy to see out in full sunshade, uh, sunshine as well. So sleep mode, I can set that to 120 seconds max there. We can change it from dark mode to light mode. I happen to like this because it's easier on the eyes and you'll see when I, when I switch it out of dark mode that, whoa, it's actually pretty bright. It's even too bright for the camera to see. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it back to uh, the dark mode, which I definitely prefer. Now I can go back again, back out to the system menu. We can go down, we can change uh, settings on the battery as well. If you have maybe a little bit larger battery, which I think this one's set to a 2S battery. So I, I don't know if I would uh, play around with anything more than a 2S here. It says up to about 8.4 volt there. Now hardware, that's, you know, depends on what type of, uh, you can do a hardware check and a, an analog calibration for stick calibration, pots and switches, as well as the ADC inspector. And over here, sticks, we can do our sticks for, uh, this is great because this changes me out of mode two to mode one, two, three, and four there. That's pretty easy to access that. Um, it hasn't been that intuitive in other radios to be able to change your modes inside the radio. Now we have wireless mode here. Uh, it has Bluetooth, which is off right now. We can get Bluetooth telemetry and trainer uh, to be able to do a wireless setup for a buddy box, which would be pretty cool. Now back there, and one more thing here is the info on Ethos. That shows me what version of firmware I'm running right now. And this is version X14 uh, made for the X14. This is cool. So they're working with SOS, FOS developers and paid for this uh, for you guys. So firmware version 1.4.16 in the FCC version. And my box says that it's the non-LBT version. Non-LBT just means FCC. Um, so this is the more full-blown full -blown version for the United States uh, Northern Hemisphere. Now date, January 9th, uh, 2024, that's when that firmware came out. So it's, it's reasonably recent. Uh, sticks are set up to ADC there, and we have the internal module it's set to TW Twin, IRSM there running on 2.4 uh, FCC. So that's pretty much how you navigate the menus inside this X14. So let's take a look at some of the receivers that will work on the X14 Twin Series. You have to look for the receivers that say TW. If you are buying a receiver for your X14, make sure you don't buy the ones that say TD on them. TD is for the Tandem Series radios. You can see that down in the product categories on the far left here. Um, TDB would, would be great because it runs 2.4 and 9, 900 at the same time. Uh, and for people doing long range, that's freaking awesome. Um, and so it just gives you a little better connection to the receiver in different types of scenarios and it will switch automatically which is pretty neat or or maybe even just run both at the same time it's it's pretty awesome so dual 2.4 again that's going to be gemini and the tw receivers are the ones you need for the x14 or the x14s the ones that i would recommend for the fpv community and you're, you know, unless you're doing super long range, you can get into uh, some larger receivers here for FPV planes, and that's if you're going to use PWM, and that's if you need to plug in servos. If you're not doing that and you want to use SBUS, get the TWMX. I mentioned before that it can run uh, FBUS. FBUS, and uh, hopefully you're you're listening closely here. Um, FBUS is can be switchable between. S bus and F bus. Um, it does S bus output. I mentioned originally that I, I, it ran F bus. Uh, it will do S bus out. So that is good to know. So you can do your your uh, video or your your voltage here, 
uh, ground as well as S bus out. Uh, we have a bind button here and we have LED status for green connection. If you're trying to bind this up, make sure you have it at least like three feet away from your radio as well. We have diversity antennas on here running 2.4, one's on LoRa and one's on FSK as well. So uh, it is cool that it, it, it is running S bus on there. So in beta flight, if you're trying to bind up this receiver and, and get your channel maps working, you can uh, try out S bus. It will absolutely work on that using um, in, it in the FO uh, operating system. Now it says by setting the TWMX to the F bus protocol in FO system, the signal control and telemetry can be connected to any device that supports F bus protocol only through one line to achieve bi-directional transmission. So uh, simplifying the model using fewer wires. Now uh, that's pretty cool. And it shows also that it has four milliseconds race mode. So ultra low latency. And that's what a lot of FPV racing guys are looking for. And this is the receiver that you should use if you're just doing general FPV flying. TWMX is gonna pretty much do anything you need it to do and it's gonna do it quick. So if we're looking for the type of receiver for the FPV community, the one you want to look at for the FreeSky Twin Series radios is the TWRX, uh, TWMX receiver. This is $36, which I think is kind of a high price point, but you're getting uh, a little more functionality out of this one versus the original uh, XM Plus that, that most of you guys used. It has a LoRa and the S FSM antenna on there uh, with a, a pretty long antenna, it looks like. And they also have input voltage at the very top, ground and negative. We have also an S bus port there, um, which you can see in the diagram on the FR Sky website, which is uh, kind of cool. That'll simplify some of the wires that you're trying to use. But don't confuse this with the TD receivers. Again, those are not compatible with the twin series radios from FreeSky. So who is this radio being made for? I believe it's made for beginners in the FPD and the RC airplane and maybe the heli hobby. But at the end of the day, is the price kind of holding some of the beginners back? Because Radio Master has made so many different types of budget radios out there uh, and Jumper RC as well. So the competition is pretty hot. And Free Sky for years has, has been our go-to, and only recently in the past five years has Radio Master and Jumper really kind of jumped into the multi-protocol market and enabled us to be able to bind to a variety of different receivers. So this one will still bind to a variety of different receivers, uh, but they're all gonna be on the Free Sky protocol so you're going to have to kind of go to FreeSky for your receivers. Now, what people love so much about Radio Master and Jumper radios for over five years now, it seems like we've liked the multi-protocol diversity. We can buy almost any receiver out there, ELRS type receivers. Uh, you can expand this one through the module bay in the very back right here, but we're going to have to confirm compatibility with things like ELRS in the future with this radio. So I'm gonna hold on to this radio for now uh, and I'm gonna keep testing it for you guys. I'll let you more know more information coming up if this radio is gonna work out with ELRS external modules, uh, Crossfire and all that good stuff. But for now, I believe it will work with Crossfire if you have a Crossfire light module uh, or the nano version that will fit in the back. You cannot use the, the larger one that my Boxer Max Edition has. Uh, also, the regular edition Boxer has the full-size JR Bay module bay on the back, which will run my Crossfire. So that makes me happy. ELRS and Crossfire on the same radio. Uh, all the bells and whistles. I have the CNC Hall gimbals on here. Uh, it's a beautiful radio. It has that longer kickstand, which I've showed you guys before on the channel. Uh, it is my choice over the Jumper T20 series. Even though this one's like a boxer chopped in half, I still like uh, kind of this mid-size radio. And I've moved on since using my TX16X uh, or TX16S for, for years um, and now using kind of the mid-size radio. And this one is maybe a, trying to be a competitor to the boxer uh, of sorts. But with built-in dual frequency on 2.4, which is kind of cool. The only thing that annoys me about this one, I guess, if I was to get really picky about it, 
is this non-foldable antenna or non-removable antenna. It's, it, it can't screw off, whereas, again, the Boxer, this one screws off. So maybe in a version 2.0, FreeSky could make a foldable antenna as well as a full-size module bay for a JR module bay in the back. That would be awesome. But it's a great start for uh, kind of just a, another dual frequency radio out there on the market. And you guys come right here to the Drone Camps channel if you want to see what's new and what's coming out for spring in 2024. We've got some super cool stuff over there on the bench. So stay tuned, stay subscribed, and look for more information, reviews, and tutorials and build videos coming up. Take care, guys, and I will see you on the next one.